Welcome to Salesology, conversations with sales leaders, the art of faster, easier, more profitable sales. When you're ready to transform your sales for today's transforming market, we've got you covered with your host, the queen of cold calling and founder of Salesology, award-winning author, speaker, sales trainer, and coach, Wendy Weiss. Hi, welcome to Salesology, conversations with sales leaders, the art of faster, easier, more profitable sales. And I'm your host, Wendy Weiss. I am the founder of Salesology and creator of the Salesology Prospecting Method. And I'm also known as the queen of cold calling. Today, my very special guest is Mickey Kennedy. He is the president and founder of e-releases. And um, Mickey founded e-releases 24 years ago to help small businesses, authors, and startups increase their visibility and credibility through tier one press release distribution. I'm going to have to ask him what that means. And uh, Mickey lives in the Baltimore area. Um, and that's that's it. Welcome, Mickey. Oh, thanks for having me. <laughs> yeah. So um, before I ask you the backstory, what is tier one press release distribution? So uh, here in the U.S., there's uh, two tier one uh, distributors of press releases, and that's uh, PR Newswire, which is the oldest and largest newswire, and Business Wire. They largely enjoy a duopoly. Um, there's probably a bunch of other players out there. I know of like a few that are trying to enter the space. The problem with it is, it's uh, these places are where journalists go to get news, and so journalists, like other people, would prefer to go to one place maybe two places max looking for news and as a result you know most journalists go to pr newswire then business wire and most of them don't have the time or need to go to the tier two newswires so as a result uh you know if you're looking to get real media coverage you really want to be on one of the tier two uh tier one wires which is either pr newswire or business wire they are quite expensive uh but uh through us uh it is substantially cheaper than going directly through the newswire okay well i didn't know that so thank you for that sure so now let's take a step back and begin at the beginning how did you get into the pr game in the first place well, that's interesting. So I graduated, oh, 26, 27 years ago with a master's of fine arts uh, in creative writing degree, specializing in poetry. And uh, my game plan was to write poetry and wait tables. And so after graduating, I did that for a summer. And I realized that standing on concrete for 10, 12 hours a day and, you know, being torn in 30 different directions was just not good for my mental health, not good for my physical health. And I decided to find a safe office job. Um, I applied to a bunch of places and I got hired at a telecom research startup uh, as employee number three. And because I had writing on my resume, they were like, hey, write releases and figure out how to get us some media coverage. And so I did that looking at the average press release that was out there and we would send it out. Uh, we did faxing at the time. Uh, we couldn't afford to send over a wire, which is like, I don't know, $1,500, $1,600 to move a 600 word press release nationally. And uh, so we, we just did the faxing and uh, we, we, we didn't get any media coverage. And so I took that as a challenge and kept refining my message and networking with journalists. And what I realized is we were really good at publishing data and numbers, but we weren't really telling a story behind it. You know, there would be like one uh, outlier, uh, say in the Caribbean that created more international telecom traffic than all other Caribbean countries combined. Why was that? And it was because it was the center uh, for 1-900 numbers at the time, which were quite popular, people calling to get their horoscope read or something like that for 50 cents a minute. And so uh, I, I then, you know, sort of talked about that story, talked about the, 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 the information behind the data. 
and sent it out. And boom, we got picked up by The Economist, Financial Times, Washington Post, Wall Street Journal, uh, New York Times. Uh, we were just getting major coverage and we did it again and again. And I felt like, wow, you know, I really figured this out. Uh, you know, why aren't other small businesses doing this? I mean, it was driving sales to us. Uh, we were getting sales from people outside the telecom uh, world. We were getting sales from uh, investment groups, you know, saying, hey, you know, uh, this information can be used as another indicator for, uh, you know, uh, economic activity. And I, I just was energized by it. And what happened at the same time was as we were faxing, journalists would call us up and say, hey, can I give you my email address? And you just send this to me by email in the future, uh, you know, forget faxing. And so um, I you know, mentioned to my boss that, hey, I thought this was a good idea, emailing press releases. And he said, yeah, you should start something like that. And so yeah, I'm working for a startup. So there wasn't a lot of free time, but I did spend like the next year just networking with journalists, um, adding them to my database. You know, I found that a lot of people change beats. So initially I thought I'd be high tech, but I just started putting all different beats and industries in my database. And so a year later, I, I left that job and started e-releases and I had about 10,000 journalists in my um, uh, database that I just emailed releases to on behalf of my clients. And uh, that's largely how we got started. Um, over the years, PR Newswire reached out to us and said they liked what we were doing, serving, uh, serving small businesses, and uh, they wanted to find a way to work together. And I really, really strong armed them to give us a national distribution for my clients. They were thinking of maybe like a local distribution or a web only distribution of our press releases. And I really fought to get a national distribution over the wire uh, on behalf of my clients without having to pay $1,600. And uh, uh, we continue to work uh, together as partners. Um, you know, they, they're not interested in people who do three or four releases a year with a total budget of like, you know, $1,500 a year max. And so uh, it's, it's really a great way for them to serve small businesses and also get some additional revenue as well. That's a great story. Um, so let's, uh, let's talk about why small businesses uh, should be using press releases. Sure. I think the biggest reason is that uh, when you, you know, send out a release, uh, a lot can happen, you know, everything from a lot to a little. And uh, we did a release during the early part of the pandemic when we were sent home for two weeks to flatten the curve. And uh, a small PR firm that we work with was uh, working with a, uh, a group. Uh, it was called the Dining Bond Initiative. It was set up for a very short lived period to help restaurants that were closed during the pandemic. And basically, if you nominated a favorite local restaurant and the volunteer was able to get in touch with them, you could give money that would go directly to that restaurant and it'd be backed sort of through a dining bond or gift certificate type thing. Um, it got picked up in, I think, over uh, 150 places. A lot of major publications picked it up, like the Wall Street Journal and New York Times. But a lot of that was daily newspapers just across the country. Um, I think it did really well because uh, it was positive news at a time when there was a lot of uncertainty and negative news. And it was also actionable. You know, we're sitting at home with nothing to do, but here was something we could do. We could give 30 bucks to our local pizza joint or something like that. Um, you know, at the end of the day, it generated more than $10 million in revenue. I mentioned over 150 media pickups. Uh, it was, uh, you know, a huge success all from one press release. You hit send and put it on the wire. And that's the real value of a wire is if you have something that's very meaningful and newsworthy, it can really go extremely wide. All right. Well, that sounds really powerful, but how do you make it work? You might have something that's truly incredible, like what you were talking about, uh, helping these restaurants that were closed during the pandemic. But if nobody reads it, because like, like, what are the elements? I guess that's the question I'm asking. What what are the elements that you have to put into this press release to get attention so that it does get picked up? And what kinds of calls to action are in the press release to get people to send their 30 bucks to the pizza place? Right. So the, the, the thing is, it, it isn't marketing. 
Uh, you can put a call to action in the press release, but it probably won't be respected. If you've read the New York Times, when's the last time you saw a call to action in an article you read about a new book or a new product or a Kickstarter campaign? It's never there. Uh, so, you know, you have to sort of take off the the marketing hat and realize that you're not going to get a call to action uh, in an article. It's going to be, uh, you know, written uh, about you or about your company. And, you know, the, the goal is to educate them about uh, what it is that you're trying to promote. And for a lot of people, it might be, for example, a new product. And a lot of people approach it as, Here's uh, a new product. Here's a list of features. Here's a page to learn more or buy it. And they fell very consistently with that approach. Uh, it's hard for a journalist to write an article with what I just outlined. You know, the the here's the product. Here's a list of features. Journalists are naturally storytellers. Uh, Humans are naturally storytellers. We've been doing that, you know, since the beginning of time around fires, telling stories. And they follow a similar pattern. You know, all books, despite what country they come from, have a climax and a denouement. And there's just a certain way that stories go. And so uh, I would push back for someone who sends me a release that uh, is like I mentioned before, is, hey, uh, I'm sure people beta tested this product, what were their results? You know, give a use case study. And they're like, oh, okay. So um, this was a client who tested it out. Uh, you know, they they were losing $17,000 a month because of, uh, you know, logistics expenses. And we had our logistics solution here. Uh, they implemented it. And at the end of the three month trial, they had actually started to turn a, you know, a profit. Yeah, or something along those lines. And here's a quote by them. And all of a sudden, a journalist can now tell a story to their audience. Um, journalists are largely uh, gatekeepers, and they're trying to decide what to let in. You know, what story either entertains or delights or educates their uh, uh, customers or their audience uh, enough that they would want to present it and put it in front of them. So, uh, you know, having a story arc allows a journalist to better do that. And they know that a story arc will engage their audience and make them see, uh, you know, other things that help our data, you know, uh, maybe, uh, you know, your logistics software solution identifies uh, a real problem in your marketplace. Maybe 67% of new businesses in your industry fail within the first five years, often because they can't solve uh, the cost of logistics. And so uh, putting that kind of data in there really shows the stakes and uh, the real value of a product like yours, also having that example of someone who used it. So uh, you, you really are, uh, in, in a way, limited as to you know how, what how you promote uh, something. Uh, you don't get the marketing, you know, call to action. But despite that, it often converts way better than your best landing pages. Um, I've had people come to me and say, "Hey, uh, we got 300 visitors from this article," and uh, it looks like more than half converted. Is that even possible? And it is because as I pointed out, not everybody who read the article clicked through to a link when you are fortunate enough to have someone that includes a link uh, in your article. But for those that were engaged enough and clicked through, um, you know, they, 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 they saw, uh, you know, your, your product, it met their price point and, and they bought it. In a lot of cases with B2B, it's often taking them to a page and getting them to uh, sign up and become a lead. And, uh, you know, it works extremely well because when someone reads an article, their advertising blinders don't come up. You know, this is like uh, when a journalist writes about you, it's like social proof. It's like third party corroboration. It is credibility and uh, it is a signal of trust. And when people read about that article, uh, you know, they often go with a sense of excitement and, uh, you know, an emotional response of wanting to learn more and see, is this what I've been looking for? Is this a solution for me? And that's why uh, PR converts so well, even without those call to actions and other uh, things that are often involved in marketing. Uh, you know, marketers don't like PR because it is a difficult thing to sort of track. But in the case of uh, the example I had, it was easy to track because there was no other marketing that was done. They they hit send on a press release and, you know, over $10 million later, you know, they uh, had helped out 
uh, restaurants nationwide, and I think it actually rolled out internationally as well, and all from um, you know one single press release. Okay, so if I'm understanding what you're saying, there is there is no way to track the ROI on doing press releases other There's than if you've done no other marketing. Well, there. I mean, there's things that you can do. It's like you kind of know uh, what you do in a month. And so if you have a big bump at the same time that you have a New York Times article about you, it, it's a pretty good indicator that, you know, that that that's probably what drove uh, that increase. Um, there are instances where people will include a link to you. It's usually never a trackable link, even if you include a trackable link in, in your press release. Uh, it, it, they just don't respect it. You know, they go to the website, they see what the page is, and then they they pop that in. Um, it it you know other indicators are when people sign up. How did you hear about us? You know, it, it could be as simple as adding something like that, uh, an open field. Uh, to to your form uh, where people could write in where they heard about you or the same thing with, uh, you know, uh, sales or leads over the phone. How did you hear about us? Uh, but, you know, it, it isn't marketing in the, the, the sense that other marketing is. And, uh, you know, the, the, the value to that is it's very organic and true. Um, people trust uh, uh, articles. Um, they trust things that are written by credible writers and editors and publications. And, uh, you know, that's extremely valuable. I had one client who uh, goes and does quotes uh, with uh, people face to face and they pull out what they call a brag book is. Uh, they have this brag book. It's got 30 clippings that they have gotten through PR and they open it and they say, we may not come in the cheapest. Um, they sell carpet. <laughs> you know, I can't think of a more non-newsworthy business there is. There are a carpet company in New Jersey. Uh, but they got uh, 30 clips, including their local paper and New Jersey magazine. But most of the rest were floor trade publications. And they say, hey, here we have been featured in Floor Trade Weekly. Here we've been picked up in this place. And uh, just by adding that extra minute of them going through that brag book, um, they started converting 17% uh, more of these consultations. And that's almost like one out of every five sales that they were previously losing, they're now winning by adding this huge credibility uh, indicator. In, in these cases, the people aren't given enough time or shown an inclination to read the articles. They're just looking at the headlines and seeing this company mentioned in publication after publication. And at the end of the day, when you're trying to decide what vendor uh, you should allow to you know, put something in your home, you feel a lot comfortable with someone who's recognized nationally uh, within their industry, as well as your local paper and uh, you know, something like New Jersey Magazine. Okay, so it sounds like this is not necessarily a direct correlation of action to ROI or press release to ROI, but uh, but rather allowing the press releases to build up, help you build up the credibility that then gets you an ROI. Yes, um, you know one of the first things that most uh, funded startups do is focus on PR uh, before they do paid advertising of any type, uh, they focus on PR and they try to get articles uh, and uh, all of these mentions uh, within industries. And one of the reasons is it's going to make it so much easier when you get to the point where you are trying to convert people uh, with paid advertising, because once you've been picked up by, uh, you know, uh, lots of big publications and small industry niche publications, it really is a huge signal of trust that will make it easier to convert those sales later. Okay. So we're going to pause now for a word from our sponsor. Uh, but then when we come back, I'm going to hold my guest, uh, Nikki Kennedy's feet to the fire and ask for some before and after stories, some examples uh, that he can, he can share with us, of P examples of PR successes. But now... A word from our sponsor, the Salesology Vault. Just about every guest that I've interviewed on the Salesology Conversations with Sales Leaders podcast has had a free gift for our listeners, and that does include my special guest, Nikki Kennedy. Um, so what we've done is we've taken all of those gifts and we put them all in just one place for you. We call it the Salesology Vault, and it's packed full of free gifts from sales leaders, sales experts, marketing gurus, revenue generation experts, and we add an, another gift every single week. 
uh, we release a podcast every Monday. And we release that podcast. We add a gift. So you can log in as often as you'd like and download as many gifts as you'd like. It's all free. So the link to the Salesology Vault is in the show notes. So as soon as you finish listening to this podcast, go to the show notes, click on the link. You will be glad you did. And I am back with my special guest, Nikki Kennedy. He is the president and founder of e-releases. And we have been talking all things PR for small businesses. So welcome. Welcome back, Nikki. Thanks. So um, I promised our listeners that I was going to hold your feet to the fire. I'd like to hear some success stories, some before and after. Uh, No PR. Send out some press releases. Fabulous, exciting result. Great. So uh, I I, I mentioned the carpet company uh, in New Jersey. Um, They did a one-year campaign with me. For the first five months, uh, we were doing a press release a month. Nothing really happened. Uh, we went back, brainstormed, and the biggest aha moment for them was when I asked who their enemy was, expecting it was like, you know, Larry across the street with the rug and Borium. Uh, they came back and said it was the big box home improvement stores, and they went into uh, a very reasoned uh argument of why they're so bad for the carpet industry. And so that's what we uh, went to press with, talked about, and, uh, you know, it went viral in the floor trade community. Uh, These were uh, industry publications, and uh, it was sort of a vacuum that uh, people were aware of this, uh, but no one had talked about it before. And I call these uh, blind spots within an industry where your own industry isn't really uh, covering that. And all of a sudden, that became such a hot button issue that we continue to do press releases uh, on different elements of marketing against these big box home improvement stores. And we continue to get picked up at the end of the, you know, um, a year, 12 months, uh, five of which nothing happened. uh, They had about 30 articles. And so that that was a a big boon to them and was able to increase their conversion 17 percent by adding that to their um, sales process. uh, you know, uh, I've had some fun clients over the years. Um, there was uh, Celebra Ducks, which is a company that makes uh, ducks uh, after in the image of like historical figures like Shakespeare and things like that. They also work with licensing. So they do some uh, famous uh, modern celebrities as well. Um, he got picked up on The Tonight Show Um uh, as well as late night with Conan O'Brien back when he had his show. Um, I, th- I think Fox and CNN and a lot of places covered it. You know, again, a flurry of sales, you know, tens of thousands of dollars in new sales uh, as a result uh, of getting this kind of media coverage. Uh, it, it, it works. It worked well for them because they had a quirky, unique product at the time. And, you know, those are the kinds of things that resonate with people. But, you know, also people in other spaces. I have uh, uh, menu engineers, uh, which uh, there's a gentleman named Greg Rapp uh, who does uh, redesigning of people's menus to basically get them to be the most cost effective for leveraging profits. And uh, he was on the Today Show as a result of this. And he has what he calls a menu boot camp. And he sells that out consistently, uh, often, you know, by getting people added to his list through media opportunities where people, other restaurants look at that and go, wow, that's really cool. Uh, maybe we can't afford it today, but I want to, you know, get on his list. And again, uh, over time, uh, they'll, you know, when the time is right, they'll sign up for his boot camp. And he's able to uh, fill out, uh, fill up his boot camps again and again as a result of, of PR. Um, there's a, you know, a company called Parks Associates, which basically makes the news, which is one of the tactics I recommend to people who find that PR is not working for them. And by doing that, they're doing a survey within their industry. 
and they do lots of surveys, but uh, anybody can do a survey in their industry. Um, it's a matter of coming up with 16 really interesting questions right now. I tell people to really brainstorm that, ask colleagues, uh, what are things you would ask people if you were at a trade show or a conference, uh, you know, sitting around the water cooler? What, what would what, what kind of uh, things that have you seen that you'd like their uh, opinion on? And, uh, you know, also take into account, you know, what's going on within your industry. You know, we we're, we're out of a pandemic. Uh, are you having difficulty, you know, maintaining a culture, getting people to go back to the office? Uh, you know, what 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 does uh, the world look like for you? And you know, are there some questions around that? Um, there could also be questions in regards to spending. Uh, you know, do you plan on spending more or less on marketing the next couple of quarters? Which could you know trigger. Uh, uh, a per, a per, you know, an idea that maybe things are going to get tighter or better over the, the next, uh, you know, three to six months. And, uh, you know, I, I like putting these uh, 16 questions in like Survey Monkey, four questions per page. On the last page, you can afford to ask a wild question or two. Sometimes those work out really well. Um, and if they stop at that point, you've still got 75% of their responses. You take that link um, for the survey, uh, you go approach an independent or small trade association in your industry. Uh, the big trade associations are no good. They're large. They like to control their own media, but the small ones get no media attention. And so if you approach them and say, hey, I have this survey I'm doing. Could you send this link to your members in exchange? I'll mention you in a press release that's going over the wire. They see that as a win-win. You know, they get no media attention here. You're approaching them and saying, I could potentially get you some media coverage. Uh, will you send this to your members? You're really looking for at least 100 responses or more uh, to be statistically relevant for most journalists to care. And uh, at, after the survey is done, you're going to analyze the results. Focus on one or two, at most three of the questions. Um, what were the ones with the biggest aha moments? And, uh, you know, build a press release about that, put a quote in there or two from you as the expert as to why you felt the numbers skewed a particular way, give that analysis. And generally, when someone does this, uh, it always results in media coverage. I've never had it fail uh, for anybody I've coached through the process, the least um, earned media articles they've ever received were four. Uh, on average, it's anywhere from, you know, six to 14 articles. For each survey. So that's a great way to do a little bit of work and pretty much guarantee that you're going to get an outcome of earned media as a result of it. It's a great way to stand out as an expert in your industry and establish yourself. And a lot of my clients do these annually because they've become recognized as experts who, hey, they do the survey every year. And it, it's a really great way to, to really define yourself as an expert out there. That is a very, very cool idea. So thank you for sharing that. Sure. And um, so I know, Mickey, that you have a gift for all of our listeners. So uh, please tell us about your gift. Sure. So I have a free masterclass that goes into the eight strategic types of releases that you should consider uh, to uh, build a meaningful PR campaign. That survey study is one of those uh, that is my go-to, uh, but uh, you can learn more with the link that will be provided to you. And it's completely free and it's less than an hour long video. I, I recognize that people's attention spans aren't what they used to. And I also know that the last 10 plus hour courses that I've paid for, I never completed. So I really tried to make it easy for people. Okay, well, I'm going to be watching that master class as soon as we finish this interview here today. Um, and as soon as you finish listening to this interview, uh, the the link to Mickey's master class will be in the show notes. So go to the show notes, click on the link. And uh, Mickey, if people want to connect with you, how can how can people find you? So uh, on my website, ereleases.com, all my social media is on the lower right. LinkedIn's the only one that I really participate in because it's the only one I understand. But I have people who follow uh, all the rest. Uh, but you can connect with us there. Um, feel free to call or chat or email uh, from the website. You'll only talk to editors. We have no salespeople, no quotas, no commissions. We're pretty uh, straightforward about whether we feel we're a good fit and whether we can help you. Okay. So if you want to connect with Mickey, 
as soon as you finish listening to this podcast, all the links to his website, to LinkedIn and everything else, all the other social media, it's in the show notes. Go to the show notes, click on one of the links. And you have been listening to Salesology Conversations with Sales Leaders with my special guest, Mickey Kennedy, who is the president and founder of eReleases. And if you have found value in listening to today's episode, then please think about one business owner, one entrepreneur, uh, one sales professional, sales leader, somebody that you know that you think might also find value in listening to this podcast, and please do share the link with them. And until we meet again, visualize yourself surrounded by cash, really large bills. You've been listening to Salesology, conversations with sales leaders, the art of faster, easier, more profitable sales. Be sure to follow so that you don't miss a single episode. And while you're at it, please leave a rating and review and be sure to share it with your friends. Tune in every week for more exciting insights and wisdom on transforming sales. And until next time, visualize yourself surrounded by cash. Very large bills. Mm -hmm.